Hey guys, Tim McCamus. I'm um, here in the shop again today and uh, got a little special guest in. We're going to start a segment on uh, some shock information, shock adjustment, shock type, stuff like that. So I got my uh, buddy Chris Bell to come up from Kinetic Engineering. He's uh, it's only about an hour from our shop here down in Cuba, Missouri, but he is the uh, the foremost uh, accredited person on shocks and adjustments and tuning. So. Um, we're going to start by going through some very basic information here, just uh, shock types and terminology, some things like that, because this, this has really evolved a lot um, in the last five years, especially, um, and it keeps evolving. And there's lots of uh, there's lots of misinformation out there. There's a lot of good information that's kind of held tight that people won't let go of. So what we're going to do is try to explain some of the basics and then we'll get into some more advanced information so um, so Chris we got a, a bunch of stuff laid out here and um, I think what we should start with is just kind of going over a few um, basic terms so when somebody gets a uh, gets a shock whether they've had one on their car or they're buying a new set um, the the adjustments you know they see all these little windows and and um, set screw adjustments things like that that are on here and it's it's confusing because they're there used to be just a very simple set of shocks. There used to be this old coney here, here right yeah, there. that's been around forever. And there used to be uh, maybe a sand tuff occasionally would show up, you know, and that's all there was. And guys would call up on the phone and they, and they would be like, what should I do? And you could say, put the, sweep the top window to here and put oh, this many clicks on the bottom. And yeah, and, and, and it would be good. And, and they worked good. But what's happened with the involvement, tech, the technology has changed so much that the, the inside of the shock has got much more complicated. The outside of the shock's got much more complicated. And, and people, sometimes they buy a lot of this stuff because they see it on somebody else's right. car, not really because they know why they're buying it. Right. They, 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 they will call us up and say, I want a set of those badass Penske shocks, you know? Yeah. And they, they don't know why, but they've seen their buddy have them and they think that's the hot lick. And when they get it, they really don't know what to do with it. So maybe we can start just with some basic external terminology so that everybody knows what we're talking about. So if you would kind of go from this shock on to the, the more advanced stuff. And, and what I brought was just kind of an array of the different adjusters that people will see. There, there's more than this out there, and we can get into that in some later videos. Um, this is the most common stuff that everybody's going to see that you're going to get a phone call on, that I'm going to get a phone call on. Um, this is the basic Coney, um, like you talked about. Uh, it's adjustment. Uh, happens the compression adjuster is down here um, you'll turn this thing clockwise to make it stiffer it has detents in it uh, so you know you'll start all the way at the soft setting if somebody tells you put it on six you start at the soft setting that's zero and then one two three four five six up from there it's pretty basic the extension adjuster is on this end um, and, and this is where a lot of people get confused um, it's a left hand, basically like a left hand thread. It's backwards, um, the way most people think. Most people would think they, that you would go this way to stiffen it, but that actually softens it on a coney. Uh, you go this way to stiffen it. So it's so looking at it from the top, it's counterclockwise to tight. Yeah. Yep. So, and, and we do all of that stuff off full tight. So like uh, whenever you see a, a setting on, on a dyno sheet and it will say uh, EXT minus two, that's the extension setting minus two. So on whatever style it is, it will be either two detents, two sweeps. So on this, we you know that that's full tight. So we would go two, two sweep. Boom, that's done. Right. So we, so one one full sweep is is one adjustment. One adjustment or, one, or like one click if it's on a right. detent type. Right. So if we went to um, if if we go to now this is the Penske. Now this is a Penske seventy five hundred. Um, it it has the same looking adjuster. It's a it's a window type adjuster but it goes clockwise to right. tighten it. Okay, so to, to shut it down, you know, we would go full tight. So these two shocks are very similar just in their in their layout, like uh, they're not as advanced. This is a standard right. double adjustable. This is a pressurized shock though, where this is Correct. not. So the adjusters um, are in the same position. Um, you just have to remember that, that the Penske is always clockwise to tighter or in to, to get yeah, tighter. Yeah, and, and it's a lot easier for people that haven't adjusted shocks because this gets them really confused. I get shocks in all the time that it's too off of full loose mm -hmm. because they think this direction. You think of a bolt, you know, 
left hand, right hand thread. This is basically the replacement that, that we'll use for, for this technology. It is pressurized, as you said. Uh, it has a, a small reservoir inside here and a separator piston. Um, the compression adjuster is down here. And so the compression adjuster uses an Allen and we just tighten it up to full tight. And then if it says again, if it says uh, EXT minus six, we go uh, compression or I'm sorry, uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Compression minus six, we go uh, one, two, three, four, five, six detents. It's yeah, detent. and so you can actually feel in there, there's a little detent. They're really light. They're, they're very light, so but you, as you turn it in, you can definitely feel a stop, and you have to be easy. The, this stuff is all very small on the inside, so you don't want to reef on this thing and get it like go past tight too far. So when you turn it in, you can feel these things moving, but they're especially when they're on the car, you have to be very sensitive. So right there, it's tight. So I don't want to go past that point because you can damage the inside of the shock. So once I get to tight now, I'm just gonna count that back and you can feel those little detents. And, and that's what we, we tell everybody to either use, if they use a regular Allen wrench, you can put the long end in and, and use the short end so you can't get leverage. Or these T-handles work well because if you try to get too much leverage, they flex. Mm -hmm. And because we do get people that they'll jam on that thing and, and then they come back and they're like, well, what's wrong with my, that one shock's way off from the other one. Well, yep. you bent some. Yeah. And, and so, so full tight, time. so compression, full full tight to compression, which yep. would be clockwise, clockwise. and just like a regular bolt. Yep. And then on the top, same thing. If you're looking at it from the top, it'll be clockwise in, just like you're tightening up the full, a regular yep. bolt. So that would be full tight, and then this direction loosens it. Yep. And if it says, you know, EXT minus six, then, then you know, we go to full tight, like that right there, and then it's just six sweeps. Yep. Perfect. Six weeks. And then okay. you're done. So, so some of the basics on this shock. I mean, we actually we have the spanner on here to adjust the spring height. Now, this is a full size snubber here, where this just has a small little O-ring um, for a snubber. Yeah, this this style of a shock, and, and we lay these out uh, lengthwise uh, for the application. It does not hit anything inside. It will not run into anything inside. This shock, if you took the snubber off, actually runs into the base valve, mm -hmm. and it will blow this compression or this extension adjuster out of it. Um, so that's why Coney has to have that. We actually typically get more stroke than what the the, the same size non-pressurized shock will get um, with this style of a shock. And and if you get in a situation, we have cars that will have a a 19 or 20 inch long shock on, which is pretty standard, but say the tires are too close to the quarter panel, um, the thing shakes, we'll put it, we'll put a bump rubber on it to stop it before it gets to the quarter panel. You'll lose some travel, but, but it keeps it out of the quarter panels. Okay. Um, and it, so, so these were the, the, this was the, the, what a lot of people are familiar with. This was a transition in adjustments. And then these are some of the other adjustments. Um, this is a style, it, it's just, they call it a red knob style. And adjust the same way. That's full tight, and then you'll feel detents. Mm -hmm. There's actually even a little plus and minus engraved on that uh, bottom of that there, where you, if you don't, can't remember which way to go, it'll tell you which way to go. Plus would be tighter, minus would be looser. Right. And it, and again, uh, if it says EXT minus six, you go to full tight, six clicks mm -hmm. off of that. Yep. Uh, this is a style that, that we see probably more often. We do a lot of these. Um, and it just, it, it's very similar to the compression adjuster on the 7500, takes the same size Allen wrench. Um, but it is, it, it's full tight like that. Again, minus six. You can actually hear the detents in that one. It's got a little stronger yeah. detent. And so that's detented. So you, you go minus six with that one. So, so let me just ask real quick. Uh, so just so everybody knows. So a lot of people don't know what's going on inside here. And so what, what this is, we're limiting the hydraulic movement in this shock we're with the little needle valves and ports in there. Right. So when you turn this, people say, okay, well, I turn it, it gets tighter. But what they're doing is actually restricting oil flow. You're actually, this has a, um, it's got a 45 degree on it. And then there's another part that comes up here and has a 45 degree a metering rod. And there's actually a needle and seat in the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. So the tighter you go, you're actually shutting off that needle and seat. Um, so we're actually turning, a, when we turn this, there's a, there's a little, and I'm not familiar with the inside of this, but there must be a little gear mechanism in here that turns that well, and, and then turns this shaft it, down the it's center. It's just a cone. So this has uh, a, yeah. a 90 degree cone on it, so 45 yeah. on the side and the other has that. So the farther you go in, it just drives that wedge right. basically. Okay. And it shoves that closed. The, the farther open you have that, 
it allows fluid to go into the bottom of the needle and seat and then come out up here and bypass the shim stat. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and that's typically um, more of a low speed number and an overall number in this kind of adjustment. And so if we, if we shut that off totally, no fluid will flow out of here. Mm -hmm. The needle and the seat shut totally and the off. And the shock would be locked The shock's up. pretty stiff because yeah. then everything, it, to, to make it function, it has to blow this shim stack open sure. to make it function. Okay. So it takes a higher speed movement to do it. Okay. Uh, and if you want to soften the shock up, you know, it, it, it's it's too soft or too stiff overall. You know, you just go out two clicks. Two clicks is, is a on any of these um, of the detent style. Two clicks is a noticeable move. That's where the, the the movement will start. Okay. On on these, one sweep will be a noticeable move. Okay. So before we get too far on the inside, um, let's we got another type down yep. here, a little bit different adjustment. So yep. tell, tell me about that. So this is very similar to that style, except in the. Ex one of it has two adjustments it has a uh, and we put air to this one two adjustments for the extension for the extension so um, we put air to this we'll put uh, we'll run 180 psi up to this and then this adjusts how stiff the shock can get okay so that right there that would be full tight it's all the way down um, so that will adjust how stiff we allow it to get if we pull this back that stops the piston that's inside there from from closing off this needle and seat then we dump the air off of it so down track if the track's really bumpy uh, we want it stiff on the starting line we want it softer in extension down track going over bumps or whatever the issue may be we dump the air off of this line so it has 180 psi we take that to zero then this controls how soft it gets so this end is full tight and then we'll back it off however many detents whatever it says on the dyno sheet um, to back it off. You know, this will say uh, like EXT hex and EXT red. Uh -huh. And so we'll have a number of EXT, say we have EXT red uh, 10 minus 10, EXT hex minus 30. That means it would act exactly the same as this did at 30 clicks down track uh -huh. once it dumps the air off of it. So with the air applied to it, this is this controlling is the adjustment. that yeah. adjustment. The, and then with the air taken away, then, then we're going to rely on this correct, adjustment. Correct. The hex then uh -huh. controls that. Okay. Um, it works well. We had, I, I probably should have brought the other style. Uh, Don Ness invented a, um, a, a sweep system that had a, an air slide that did this. It's a positive stop. This still relies on pressure to hold it closed. Uh, we, we like, we use both styles. It just depends on the application. Well, one thing I wanted to uh, talk about here too was we, we get uh, shocks when you change from one shock to another. One thing you have to make sure of the, is that you're mounting it properly, and not all these shocks have the exact same width bushings in them. So obviously, this this is going to be how the shock mounts. You can mount the this with the top mount here. These have a half inch hole in them, and depending on what you have for your mounting uh, hardware, you may have a bushing that goes in here to reduce this hole down, or even on top of that, you may have some offset spacers that go on each side to keep this centered up in the bracket. So don't just take it for granted that. The shock will swap out. You might take this shock off and it might have a bushing pressed in it. You put this one on and use a 3 8 uh, bolt in it, but it's a half inch hole. So make sure that you want the uh, hardware to be a nice fit into the center. And also this doesn't need to move side to side. It needs to have um, bushings on each side to keep it centered up in the bracket. As well, I tell you what, we're going to wrap up this segment before we go on to any more advanced stuff. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next episode because we're going to get into a little more detail.